Good morning. It is March 11th. We're almost up. Uh, we're, I'm not going to even say almost. We're halfway through March. Um, March 11th, 2024. Um, it's Monday. It's my day off. And uh, what time is it? Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Hold on. It's 9 12. I'm starving. I'm actually laying up here trying to figure out what I should eat for breakfast. Um, I'm like, should I take my shower first and then make breakfast? Or I sometimes what I do is put my breakfast in the oven on low and while I'm taking my shower or after I take my shower and get dressed. And then by the time I get dressed, it's usually done. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that. Um, I kind of like want to just want it to be a lazy day, but I do have to jump out and... Uh, grab a couple of things uh, just to get ready for my week. So I'm off Monday. I work Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm off Thursday. And then I work Friday, Saturday. So you ready to get the day started. Took my shower and I combined these two again. To me, it has, it's a nice scent to put these, pair these two together. Hey, so it's still Monday. I'm on my way to the cemetery. Um, just to check some things out. My cousin told me something. So I just want to go check it out. And it's time for me to go anyway, because I think, I don't remember the last time that I was there. So that's not good. <laughs> the weather was um, warmer. I want to say the end of... So I think since the weather has turned cold in the fall and uh, winter, I don't, I don't think I've been out here. And I've been wanting to stop by anyway. So, anyways. So I kind of wanted to talk about the... Um, in the last clip, I showed you the um, body glaze, I think it's called, and then the um, Santal Blue um, body oil. I mixed them together and put them on my legs, my arms, my chest, and um, every now and then, I'm like... <laughs> I'm smelling it. So it's something about, I guess, when the body glaze hits your body and your, you know, your from your body heat and all of that. And it just, I'm smelling it and it smells, to me, it smells good, you know. So um, it's not, they're not joking. So I got one of the scents that you don't hear too many people talk about. I've heard, heard one person talk about it and it wasn't in a it wasn't in a bad light but it wasn't so favorable either and they were saying that you know it's okay but I noticed um, the one I have is Siama but I was looking through all the different scents there's a Siamo and so I was like okay is that the male version of um, you know to Siama because um like I was saying, I only heard one person talk about it. And they did mention something like it was like a male scent. To them, it was a male scent. And um, I think that's what kind of made me want to see what it's like. Because there are, I do like uh, a lot of male colognes and stuff like that. Um, and um, I was just interested. But I think the Siamo might be the answer to the to the Siyama <laughs> but I like um, Siyama and so I I know the person who is the um, she is the um, owner and um, should I say inventor of this body glaze she said that there's been some individuals who are copying her because of course they know that she's doing very well she's very successful 
and of course they're trying to get that money so I did see someone on TikTok I don't know if they were um which one I didn't stay on it was alive I don't know if they were paid to advertise the body glaze but it wasn't the person that owned it or originated this product um i didn't see the person's face but by hearing the person's voice and seeing the person's hands i was like i don't think that's now she might have been um she may have been paid to advertise the product but she was talking about it was a sale like 50 percent sale and so i went and looked up the body glaze and it's still showing the same still showing the same price so i was just really interested in i mean i, I mean that just made me curious um this person that was advertising it for 50 percent off were they the ones that <laughs> the um person was talking about the one that actually started this company so you just have to be it's just I, you know I just hate, hate to hear stories like that where people work so hard and they start something that's successful but I think it's a part of human nature right I'm not saying that it's right that someone should take from someone but it just it just never fails whenever someone has something that's popular you will get someone else will either they're going to copy it or they're going to actually try to take it from you i was just telling my cousin there's someone that i was watching her she has good recipes she has good uh information about um uh, different ways to cook i never knew that you could make biscuits on the stove top she talked about that she talked about cleaning your 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 produce with um what's it baking soda bacon powder baking soda baking powder anyway um <laughs> and uh just a lot of helpful oh i'm doing a lot of building along here just a lot of helpful tips and she has a lot of followers well one of her videos so you know her account got hacked into it and she can't even get in get in it herself that's her platform that she started and built up and someone hacked in it and she doesn't have access to it anymore isn't that something that's just really and she you could tell she was hurt she was upset and she was asking for you know her followers to help her out to find who it is because she said i want you know my account turned back to me now like today and I don't blame her you know and um, unfortunately the last video I saw she was saying you know um, I realized that I can't get it back that fast and um, you know she mentioned that some people what happens to they they never get their account again so it's like they kind of have to build up again so it's just really um, kind of messed up, you know, how people will take something. They're building a lot of houses around here. You know, I never, the last time, like I said, the last time I was here, um, it was the weather was warm. I really got to look to see the last time it was. I'm, I'm almost sure. I remember it being warm. And so there are like, I've passed by homes, a lot of homes being built along here. And, um, wow. And there's traffic. <laughs> and, um, wow. have to find another way to um, to come back 
Because going this way is not moving. And I see somebody is giving up. They turning around like, forget this. I'm not waiting in this. Oh, it's starting. It looks like it's starting to move now. <laughs> Isn't that something? Just when you decide, oh, this ain't going to work. I'm not sitting in this trap. <laughs> the minute that person turned around, it opened up. <laughs> oh, well, maybe not. Um, I just need to get, I just need to make a right down there. So, wow. Okay, I'll be back. So it opened up. Um, like I said, right after that person made it, turned around. <laughs> it opened to, uh, to go. So here at the cemetery. Flowers. Okay, I'm leaving the cemetery. So my cousin was telling me that she put some flowers, and she's really good at coming here and, and putting flowers at my parents' gravesite and my sister and grandmother's gravesite. And so, um, and she usually like texts or whatever, hey, yeah, went to the cemetery, yeah, changed the flowers. And you know, me and, <laughs> me and my mom used to be like, wow, she's awesome at that because we just, don't get to make it that often to the cemetery and then she changes the flowers and all that so she texted me this morning and said that someone took the flowers out of my parents vase at their you know the gravesite and she noticed the flowers were in a different uh, vase and so um, but she said she took some managed to take some out of my my grandmother and my sister's gravesite and then you know put back in there my parents vase and so I said you know I thanked her for doing that and I told her I was going to come and add some flowers and so she did a good job because both vases were full <laughs> she said she was going to buy some more flowers you know at the dollar store and um, you know little excuse me imitation flowers and um, to replace and so that's exactly what we have. And so my mom used to always, you know, she had a bunch and got them in the back. I, mean, I got them right here beside me. And, uh, you know, we just change, periodically change them out. So when I went there, really no need for me to go, but I just wanted to look. And um, it kind of upset me, you know, with her saying she saw my parents flowers and she said I know that those were the their flowers that I put in your in your parents in um, vase because I did it before I went on she left to go to New York and so um, and I I don't doubt her because she goes and like I said she goes there more than than I uh, than I do but um so, but I noticed, and the last time I was here, um, some flowers were knocked out of the vase. And, um, you know, because it's kind of, the last couple of days here, it's been kind of windy. And so, I kind of chalked it up to being, you know, I was like, well, you know, maybe, you know, it has been windy. Maybe the wind blew them out and someone just took them and, well, they probably... You know, when when they fell out, maybe they were near a site and somebody might have took those flowers and put them in wherever. Who knows what happened? And then maybe somebody did take them, you know. But I just kind of like wanted to go because I've been thinking about going anyway. It's like, you know, the other day I was like, um, I think it was Thursday. I was thinking, um, you should just go. And uh, last Thursday, you should just go and go to the... Uh, cemetery and so I was kind of like ah, oh, you know I don't like the place that the space that I'm in when I leave there and so um, yeah but I'm kind of in that space now 
but I'm reminding myself that um, how grateful I was to have them in my life and if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have experienced certain experiences and you know been able to do certain things or you know so I'm grateful so I'm grateful to my grandmother my sister my father and my mom you know especially hearing different experiences that different people have had that were unfavorable um, I'm like oh my gosh I you know I am just really really grateful so anyway oh I feel like I'm on a roller coaster roller coaster I guess you probably feel like it too <laughs> you know sometimes when I look back at the um, when I'm recording and I'm driving and looking at the road I'm like how fast was I going <laughs> so I gotta be a little bit more mindful of the speed I'm not going that fast but I have to be more mindful of the speed so now I'm headed to the other end of the earth which is the post office <laughs> so this right here this intersection that I'm coming to with the stop sign this is this is where all the traffic was built up. So, as you can see, there's a little construction vehicles um, to the right. And, um, yeah. So, I'll meet up with you later. Hey, family. It's um, March. I can't think of the date right now. <laughs> I think it's the 14th. Um, and I wanted to talk about this item. So the other day, I'm sitting and I looked to my right and I was like, you know what? I remember I bought this off Timu. It's a charger, like a, um, you know, one to carry around. And today I got to take my car to get the oil changed. And, you know, you just be sitting. Now, usually I sit right there. I think they do have services where you can... Um, you know, they can take you home or whatever. But anyway, I usually just sit right there. And they have charging charging stations there. But, you know, I just wanted something to carry in my purse. So um, I couldn't remember if I used this or not to try to see if it works. So I charged it last night and I plugged it in. So I'm going to find out today how good it is. I think at some point I'll probably be using it. Uh, you know, hopefully I won't be there that, that long. Um, but you know, never know. You never know. So check it out. This is the charger. You can get it on T Movie, probably can get it on Amazon, probably you can get it at your local store. But I got it on T Movie, and I think it was it was it was relatively cheap. I can't remember. I want to say it was like five dollars or more. So check it out. So you could just see I got it plugged in. I don't want you to think. Oh, she ain't got it plugged in. She got something else plugged in. There you go. And as you can see, the little lightning bolt and the battery um, icon, it works. Hey, family. So I'm on my way to get my car uh, oil changed. My car's uh, oil changed. It's Thursday. March 14th. I kind of struggle with uh, what's going on down here with the what you call it? Are they renovating the firehouse? Anyway, earlier I struggled with the uh, let me roll this window up. I struggled with what date it was. So it's the 14th. It's Thursday. Nice day. My little thermometer thingy in here it says 69 so yeah so I normally take my car to a dealership um, matter of fact I got this car from the deal from that particular dealership traded my last car in when I got this one for it 
I think I told you guys a story about that. How I just, you know, the last car I had was not, it got to the point where it was not reliable. When I got behind the wheel, there was no, no, you know, I did not know if I was going to be driving back with it. Didn't know what I was going to run into. It was going to, one thing I, I'm grateful for that it did not cut off on me while I was driving on the interstate or in, on the, in the streets. It would wait until I would park the car, you know, and then get back in it to go either come back home or, um, I don't, I don't think it ever, yeah, it always started up from home. It was just when I got to, you know, wherever I was going, there was no guarantee that it was going to start up and that it was either going to be towed or either, <laughs> or either jumped or something, something had to be done to it. And it just was not, we couldn't find anything wrong. They had a diagnostic put on it several times and it just, it was acting kind of crazy with my son. He was driving it, following me to the dealership. And I had, I think I was borrowing my mom's car at the time. Yeah, I was borrowing her car. And uh, yeah, because that night when I got the car, when I got this car, he followed me to, um, to uh, bring my mom's car back to her. And she was excited. I mean, that's the thing. I, of, of the many things that I loved about my mom was that she was just so supportive. And she was so excited. She came outside and looked at the car. And even if she didn't think it was all that, you know, I think she was like, oh, thank you, Lord. She ain't going to borrow my car no more. <laughs> So, anyway, um, yeah, but my dad, he wouldn't come out, dad, you want to come, nope, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, and I think, and he was kind of disappointed and angry with me for getting a new car, you just wanted, it wasn't nothing wrong with that other car, you just wanted to get a new car, well, you know what, dad, you're kind of, right about that. Oh, this this dump truck is spitting out pebbles and dust and all that. Let me see if I can get past it. Oh, it looks like it's wet. Anyway, um, he was specifically right, but I was thinking about my um, I was thinking about my safety and whether or not because when I, what you call it, when I got stuck somewhere out, you know, just call them all up. I'm stuck, I'm waiting for a tow truck, take me to wherever, and I never knew, didn't have a, you know, somebody that I consistently could say, okay, this person, I know they, they'll look at the car and uh, be able to fix it. I would always be, I don't know where I'm going to take it, you know, and so, um, you know, just give her a call, and of course she would relay that information to my father, and he would just be like, "Did you do this? Did you do that?" And when you take a hit, tell him this, tell him that, you know, to help me. But it was like he was chastising me. So anyway, yeah, he said, "You know, you just want to get a new car just to get a new car," and I didn't want to get one just to get one. I got something because I wanted something reliable. <laughs> And, you know, I was like, I can't be, you know, that's what happens after a while when you pay for your, a car. After a while, you do put a lot of money into it to kind of maintain it and keep it, um, keep it running. And then it gets to the point where you're putting more money than it, the car is worth. And then what do you do? Well, I end up getting another car. But, you know. I really like when you stop making those those uh, car notes. You don't want to, you know. That was the thing. I really didn't want to pay a car note, and um, I think that last car, the car before this one, my car note was what two fifty. <laughs> I 
I think initially it was three something, then I refinanced it. It went to two fifty or something like that, and that was just. And then this one, they told me how much. <laughs> I sat there and I had that look on my face and that lady said, matter of fact, she made a remark too. I can't remember what she said. <laughs> but I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? I know it's going to be painful. I know I can pay it. I got a job and so I'm just going to do it, you know? But, um, so now I'm done. I don't want to make another car payment. I don't. But, you know, in the meantime, I'm just going to save so that if I have to put some money into the car, I keep getting too close to this uh, truck. And I'm trying to go around. Uh, here comes this cars in the right lane. I'm going to go around. And there's a person behind me. They're like right on my back. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so pray for me. Hope that, um, you know, you ever see that meme where this lady's at a car? She took her car in and she said, you always got to be finding something. Something some things <laughs> and that's how I feel oh gosh that's how I feel the dealership any ticket for any show hey family so I'm finally leaving I finally left the car dealership you know they had something on the website that said oh excuse me if you schedule later on in the day, you won't have so much of a wait. Um, but, you know, I guess I had to take some things into consideration. Um, of course, when you go there, they did like they do like a, is it called 10 point inspection? They do an inspection to see what other things, you know, you may need to have done. And I know I haven't been I hadn't taken my car for maintenance in a minute. I want to say, I think the last time it was taken, my son took it, and it was for something that, was it with the, the sensor or something? It was something that wound up being expensive, and um, they were supposed to do, and then it was an afterthought. Oh, I need to the oil changed too but they they never charged me for it and they never did it so I went all through the winter the rest of the summer and the winter with no oil change and um, I was just noticing some things with the car especially the brakes um, it was pulling and so I was like okay they probably gonna say I need my brakes fixed, but I'm not going to say anything. And sure enough, that was one of the things on there. And so, uh, it was a lot of liquid levels, cooling, you know, stuff like that, power steering, stuff like that that need to be, it was a lot that needed to be done. Plus the car, I got a lot of miles on this car. Um, so, yeah. It was like stuff that needed to be maintained over time. And so I was like, you know what? I'm here. I'm grateful that I'm able to pay for it. So <coughs> let me do it. So, so after I sat there for, I got there like a little after 12 noon. I sat there for about an hour and a half watching. They had, uh, what's that channel? Ion has marathons of different cop shows like Chicago PD and Blue Bloods and uh, 
NCIS and you know shows like that and but they only do it on certain days and today was Chicago PD day <laughs> and so I'm sitting there and I'm my phone and I'm not the only one there's a bunch of people in there and it's funny this this uh, salesman he would come into the waiting area every now and then and ask people uh, looking for a brand new car <laughs> So uh, when I happened to be coming into the waiting room, he was going out and he asked me the same thing. I said, no, thank you. And um, I bet he gets some sales that way too, because it might be the man that right when I got this car, I think I had took it to be looked at. person and yeah that's how I got this car I got now but anyway um so I'm quite sure that gentleman will get he will get some sales so um I was just really exhausted I think the person um that was assigned you know they have a person that assigned that you're assigned to when you come up in there and so he was nice, but I think he kind of got annoyed with me checking on when my car was ready. But I don't care if my car. Anyway, so I came there. I came to him and I said, you know, just trying to get an idea. And so he said, you know, you got a lot. You're getting a lot done. And I said, yeah, I understand. I just want to know. I just want to get an idea when, when it's going to be done. So he called himself looking for the person that was working on my car and said you know he couldn't find him but he said I'll be working on it and I will contact you uh, when you're ready but the thing is is that the, the way I knew my car was ready is that my my Apple Watch started vibrating and then it all automatically when I started up it has certain places that I go to. Like if I'm at home, it will either tell me how to get to the post office, tell me how many minutes to get to the post office, or to church, or <laughs> there's some other um, places that I go to, and it'll tell me how long it'll it take me to get there. So my <laughs> my watch started vibrating, and it told me how many minutes it would take for me to get home and so I was like my car must be ready and so I sat there for a little bit a couple of seconds not too long and I kind of looked at my phone to see if they text me or whatever they didn't and then I just got up and so if you walk down in the uh, waiting room for a little while you'll see you know they'll bring your car out in a little area there so I saw my car sitting out there. I said, oh, it's ready. So I just went to the uh, person that was handling my my uh, car and waited for him to have, get the paperwork so I can get out of there. And so I wanted to go to, there's a Sam's nearby and I'm really low on honey. So... That's what I put in my tea, is honey. I don't put sugar in there anymore, even though, you know, I know, I know honey had sugar in it. But I just wanna, you know, put natural sugar in there. So anyway, 